Hello, my friends. How are you? How are you? How are you, fellow quilters? I see a few of you tuning in already. That's great. I'll wait for a few more good mornings and hellos. You can't quite see out my window. It's still fairly dim outside. The beautiful red maples that I've got on my street. I so, so love it. So love it. <sighs> so what's on the agenda today? I'd love to hear what you're working on, by the way, if you're working on something while you're listening. Today, I am working on this gorgeous kind of Christmassy floral quilt that I've got loaded. It's a big one. It's 86 inches square. And I thought since I was just loading it first thing this morning that it would be a great opportunity to talk about floating tops versus tops that are completely attached to the rail on the long arm and why you might choose one over the other and why I choose floating tops, which is what I usually do. So let's see who's tuning in. Donna, Elaine, Teresa. That's all I see so far. The comments don't seem to be flowing like they usually do. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, it's always a conundrum. But I am Susan Smith and you are in my studio, Stitched by Susan. And I've been coming live onto YouTube every morning. This is day 20 of 30 to just chat about things that are quilting related. There come the comments now. Wow, there we go. Um, just informally inviting you into my studio. So whatever I'm working on that day, whatever sort of topic I'm engrossed in, you get to share too. So hopefully these will be helpful to you in your quilting journey and it gives you an opportunity if you wish to ask questions also about the topic at hand. So yes, live every morning, usually between eight and nine Pacific time for me. So um, that's usually when I'm getting going in the morning and got something interesting happening. So here's, a, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Lots of people tuning in, let's see here. Say good morning to a few of you, Wendy and Jana and Maggie and Pam, Linda Burke, Jesse, Carlene, Teresa, again, working on my last three quilts for Christmas. Good for you because it is still mid-October. Good job. Another Peggy, Kelly, another Teresa, Mary Rose, Eva, Marge, Joyce, Mona, Marilyn, my husband from upstairs. Yay. Getting the coffee on. Do, 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 do. Good. Excellent. Okay, let's talk about floating quilt tops. Here's what floating a quilt top means. This quilt I've got ready to start quilting. So I've loaded it on my long arm rail. I've loaded the backing. So it's attached at the top. You can see my red snappers there. It's attached at the bottom end in the same way with the red snappers. Could be pins, could be whatever, but the backing is attached both top and bottom and the excess is rolled up in front of me. So my backing to begin with is taut and snug. I lay my batting on top of that just on the first area that I'm going to quilt on and I let the excess hang down in front of me. Then I lay my quilt top on that, lining it up, you know, with the top, the sides, getting it all straight. But also I'm letting all this excess quilt just hang in front of me or float. And before I start quilting then, I've basted up the left side all the way across the top and down the right side, stabilizing this area of the quilt. And I will in a moment after I'm done talking about this, attach my magnetic bars, which if you follow me at all, you've seen before and certainly you can see on my other YouTube episodes, attach my magnetic bars along the front rail, stabilizing my entire work surface then and it can't shift. So. Why do people roll on the entire quilt top at both ends? Because maybe it helps to kind of reverse think this a little bit. For one, it is the stability. It's knowing that, that, that it's straight at the top edge when you've basted it, straight at the bottom edge, and it's rolled into place so it can't shift or get out of place from top to bottom at all. You know, within the sides, lots of things could still happen, but top to bottom are totally stabilized. And a lot of people just like that security of getting all the way to the bottom, knowing they've got a straight edge attached there and getting no surprises when they get to the bottom of the quilt. I can totally see that. You absolutely can do that way. I prefer this way for one thing because it's far faster and more efficient. And these days I don't quilt quite as much as I used to, but I used to turn out a lot of like number of quilts with edge to edge quilting on them. And it mattered to me if I could get my loading process shaved down by three or four or five minutes per quilt, that mattered, that made a difference. So that was one of the first things that attracted me to this style of loading was the speed of it. But also 
And this is part of my background. I've worked with fabric and sewn garments and made quilts really my whole life. So I brought that knowledge to the management of my quilt top because it's true. You do have to think ahead and you do have to, in increments, gauge the quilt top and its squareness when you float it this way. Every time you advance the quilt and you have another pass, another area, you have to make sure that front edge is remaining straight. And if it didn't start straight, if it started wonky, you want to be adjusting and getting it straight. And I talk about a lot of these things in a lot more depth on many of my live and unscripted YouTube episodes. They are usually client quilts. And often they do have a challenge and I've done some specific ones on wonky borders or unsquareness. One of my favorites is called the two inch minimizer. It was like a 45 inch quilt that had two inches of extra fabric in the border. And how do you deal with that? Well, to me, it's easier to do working one section at a time and managing that section, looking down at the front of the quilt to know what I've got coming, but managing one section at a time. And when that all adds up, it adds up to a straight quilt at the bottom. So, Summarizing that last big old paragraph, <laughs> I use my knowledge of fabric and how much you can adjust it and shift it to um, keep, uh, keep tabs on the quilt top and I never let it get away from me. So I don't get ugly surprises when I get to the bottom. So for that reason, I don't need that bottom rail loaded. Another thing that I love about it is that I have access easily to the underneath of the quilt. So for example, when I advance, I always give my batting a tug too. And sometimes I just do it through the quilt, tug on both layers together. But if I'm seeing that my batting is running crooked on one side or the other, it's very easy to just flip up my quilt top and have a look, what's happening under there? Where do I need to straighten up that batting and get it going more smoothly? Also, funny things happen like dark threads underneath the quilt top surface. You can reach under there and get them because you still have access to it. Or worse yet, and I just can't even tell you how many times this has happened, but it's in the dozens, there's a seam coming undone and you need some access to it to maybe hand stitch it in place or stabilize that. And you can do that when your top is floating and it's not attached at the bottom rail. So I like all those features. So this is something that's completely up to preference. Some people always load them on both rails. Some people always float them like me. Some people do a mixture of both depending on maybe whether they're custom quilting or whether they have a double bat or all these different factors that can feed into it. So I encourage you to experiment with it. There's not a right way and a wrong way. There's the way that seems easiest for you and most efficient. So let's see what we've got for comments coming on. More good morning, Savannah, Laura, Daisy, Paula, Another Laura, Marilyn, daughter and I are new long arm quilters. Awesome, what a fun thing to do together. I'm sad to say that neither of my daughters really are quilters. They've made some, but it just has not appealed to them the way that it does to me. So it's all me. Angie, good morning from Minnesota. Oh, at a day quilting retreat. Awesome, I'm a little jealous. How nice. Jana, beautiful quilt looks Christmas. It is definitely Christmas colors. It's mostly floral. Um, I'm actually quilting a computerized or digital design on this one, I think, today. I haven't started quilting yet, so that's not carved in stone. Um, and I was just scrolling through, my computer's behind my head there. I was scrolling through designs to see if I had something that's subtly Christmas. You know, floral with a few holly leaves or floral with an ornament tucked in here or there. And I haven't found one yet, but I haven't made up my mind yet what I'm going to do. But yes, it is Christmassy. And Peacock, a belated hello from Uruguay, awesome. Carlene, not using pins, priceless. Oh yeah, and I didn't think of mentioning that one, Carlene. This is a savings, it's kind of funny, but it's true. When I used to use pins to, to attach my quilts before I had the red snappers, I don't really know how it worked. I didn't ever jab myself terribly, but somehow the front, the stomach area of my t-shirts always had holes. So I actually got to where I had a few t-shirts that I wore for quilting because I didn't want to wreck all my good clothes, right? Because somehow just using pins uh, across that straight flat edge, somehow I was always tearing holes in my clothes. So there's a real savings in t-shirts. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing today, working on this huge, huge quilt. Um, do you have any questions about the floating process? 
it's it's fairly straightforward and if you want to see it in action really truly watch almost any of my live and unscripted videos um, they're live streaming a whole quilting process i did one yesterday although yesterday's quilt was basted all the way to the bottom but most episodes the top is floating and so you get to see the process of me advancing the quilt and adjusting and tweaking the batting and you know lining up things straight with the seam lines and all that stuff you can see in action and not just hear me talking about it a few more highs, but I don't see questions coming in. So look at that. We're just under 10 minutes today, you guys. I always say these are 10 to 15 minutes long, and then I'm always a half an hour talking. <laughs> Debbie, I bought the red snappers and magnets so I can try your method of floating. Now all I need is for my long arm to arrive and get set up. I am going to tell you a tiny cautionary thing, Debbie, because I do hear this from a lot of people. Number one, have patience with your red snappers. They soften up and get a bit easier with use. Maybe even consider warming them with a blow dryer the first time or two that you use them. And number two, the magnets. Someone just commented on a YouTube episode this week. Clearly unhappy. Bought your magnets, dropped one on my toe, broke it. So I feel very badly about that, because but they are heavy. So let me just say, manage them. For me, they're long magnetic bars, and I actually store them behind me. Just right behind me when I'm quilting is a wall. And at the crook of the wall and the floor, I just tuck them right in there. And that's where I keep them stored, as opposed to just laying out loosely on the floor. Because you stub your toe on one of those, and oh my goodness, it is painful. So I know that. So yeah, just, just be aware. Okay, Angela, hello from Alberta, simply quilting in Oklahoma, visiting grandchildren, piecing fall leaf blocks in my RV. That's awesome. I almost always float my quilts on my long arm. Quite a few quilters do. There, it is fairly easy once you get the hang of it and you know what to watch for and what to be aware of. It is easy and quick and very lovely. I think I should mention one other thing here too. You can see my long arm rails. This top rail is often called the belly bar. And on a lot of brands of machines, mine included, this is the bar that's intended for rolling the bottom end of the quilt top. So usually it would, it would have a whole roll of layers of fabric here. So I've modified what my Bernina machine manufacturer recommends as the loading process. Because I know I'm going to float my quilt top and I know I don't need this rail for that, I attached my leader for the bottom end of my backing to the low bar. Okay, I said that wrong. This rail is usually intended for the backing. The low bar is intended for the top. Knowing I didn't need it for the top, and I'm sorry if I got that confused, knowing I didn't need it for the top, that's where I attach my backing. So all that happens on this belly bar is my backing skims over it and goes down. My batting skims over it and hangs down, and then my top. So there's only those layers, never more. There's never a roll of fabric there. So those magnets do stick very firmly and I don't have any trouble with that. So depending on your brand of machine and how their bars are arranged, if you want to try floating, you may have to think about rearranging that, but maybe try floating a time or two first and see if it even appeals to you. Um, if the magnetic um, rods won't stick, you can even run a couple of pins just above your quilting area. Pin, 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 pin. Again, stabilizing that front so it can't pull up while you're quilting. So there's a couple ways that you could experiment with it and see if it even works for you. <laughs> Slew on YouTube, what's the shut upping? I'm not sure what I'm saying. <laughs> Jan, a question. When you're floating and come to the end of the quilt after advancing, how do you secure the end? And Debbie has a question too. I'll come back to that second. Okay, Jana. When you're floating and come to the edge of the quilt, you'll see this in tons and tons of my YouTube videos. Much like I have basted the left side going up, the top and the right side, when I get to the bottom end of the quilt being visible here, I just go ahead and baste that edge and then finish quilting in the last pass. Does that make sense? So basically I'm in increments basting the whole perimeter of the quilt while I work. When the bottom becomes visible, I baste the bottom as well. Debbie, do you need the backing to be longer since it's attached to the bottom bar? Well, the backing always needs to be longer than your quilt. In some way, it's got to be attached to that bottom leader, whether it's red snappers or whether it's pins. So you'll hear most commonly from long armors, they'll ask for four inches to be available on all sides, four inches more backing than quilt top. You need something at the top and something at the bottom to attach it, and you need something at each side to put clamps. You have to have that little bit of excess or you're always struggling. Yeah, you're struggling when you get stitching too close to the edges of things. 
Okay, Savannah, the magnets are fabulous, but don't drop them on your toe and watch your fingers if you get them together. It's true. They are industrial strength magnets. So be aware. I mean, it's not like McDonald's coffee. We can't put hot all over the magnets. May hurt your fingers, but it is true. Be aware. They're strong magnets that you're working with. Mary Rose, have you considered a book of patterns? Yeah, I have Mary Rose, but I'm frankly so busy making videos that a book is just not on my horizon at this point. So maybe someday. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for today. We're now at 15 minutes. See, here we go. Um, but yes, I will be back again each morning for 10 more mornings. Feel free to email me if you've got a topic you'd like to see discussed, info at stitchedbysusan.com. And check out my YouTube channel in general for lots of quilting videos. Most of them are live streaming because that's kind of what I do. So you get to see the whole process from beginning to end. Also, if you're signed up for my newsletter, and you can do that easily by just going to my website and you'll get a little pop-up opt-in form. But if you're getting my newsletter, watch today or tomorrow. We'll see when I get it done. There will be an invitation to a workshop that I'm holding next Saturday, and it's entirely free. And I call it five myths that tie freehand quilters in knots and how to bust free of them, how to break free of them. Um, talking about the things that, that mentally hold us back people that want to free motion quilt and think I can't because fill in the blank. So I'm going to take five of those common I can'ts and break them up and show you how you can. So I bring lots of pictures and stories from my own experience and students to show you that indeed you can be a free motion quilter if you want to be. So that is happening next Saturday. Registration forms will be, like I said, coming out in a newsletter and also all over social media over the next few days. So you can grab any of those to get your seat. And do we have any more questions before I go? Do, 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 do. Nope, looks good. Thanks so much for joining me, you guys. Whatever you are doing today, I hope you have a great Saturday and I will check with you again tomorrow morning. Don't forget to give one more thumbs up and share this with other friends that you think might enjoy it. I'd so appreciate it. Talk to you tomorrow.